Hi right, guys, Dan the Wolfman here, catchitu.com, aka the real new Steven Seagal. I'm going to bring you some really interesting footage of Steven Seagal doing takedown defense from multiple videos edited together that I think you'll really enjoy. But did he learn it his lifetime of martial arts, which Akito was not his first martial art? Karate, he says, but I've also heard from a very reliable source that he also did some Wing Chun before Akito. Or did he possibly learn it by watching my videos, including this video from 2009 Wait, back in how Expert Village, gonna, me showing uh, bear hug defense come into the attack. when they're up close and they I'm come in for a bear hug. Force. So if he comes here, you're going on his head and tilting his head backwards, and you're going to eye gouge in real self-defense. You're going to take your thumbs and push them into his eyes, and you're taking his head backwards to not let him get his arms around you. So that's how to defend the bear hug. Let's see if this looks familiar now from Steven Seagal later on. So, so everyone can see because that's too fast. These are the eyes here. This is my eyes. You take this part, you get the chest, you get the chest, you get the chest. They're blind. Yeah, from the back, from the back, you have to turn. So, the same thing. In the eyes. Okay. We don't know if it's allowing MMA because it's not allowed to attack. And you see how he turns there, and he was about ready to do my hands first biomechanics defense. Now we hear Lyoto Machi Machida doing it to his brother Chinzo, who I trained with for three months. The double palm strike, and it could also be a double thumb, thumb gouge after that. Kind of lotus flower double palm strike. And it's a legitimate technique. That's Absolutely it is. Especially if you learn to fight with your hands in certain low positions or by doing my distracting hands. You see my next level MMA distracting hands. Uh, hands first biomechanics defense. When he applied that, it really hurt my face here. Short choking the eye, the nose, the philtrum, the jaw. You can break a jaw that way, water in the eye. For us, this for sure, I think is very effective to MMA. Yeah, because MMA they use it as a cross face now. So definitely go to and subscribe to Machida Karate and check out their full video of them talking about it. Uh, I highly recommend you analyzing the style. I trained with both of them for three months, pretending to be Ryan Bader for the first fight, not the one that happened last week. For the first fight. Lyoto Machida, as you see there, got a flawless victory by a knockout. And now what is that? Using head manipulation biomechanics, a head twist here, just like I was teaching for years, and Francis Nagano did it to Stipe in the first fight, and we see the double palm strike here, which would really jack your neck up and give you at least a stinger and probably drop a guy down on the round, ground in agonizing neck pain. Yes, literally, if you're shooting in. So, now you'll see some more footage of me here. And look at this interesting sword hand slice tape breaking structure takedown. Something that should be played more with from other styles. And there's Seagulls type action there. Suyagi Ukinagashi to uh, Irimi Nagi. Akiyama Osoto guy, haven't we seen Peter Yan do that twice in a recent world championship fight? And now in beta testing what I could do against fairly alive punches, uh, against the jab is really the easiest. People say it's against the cross, but really against the jab, chokes, neck breaks, variations here, it all depends. You gotta have sensitivity, timing, balance, structure, base, balance, stuff that people that train to keto for 15 years and have channels you don't have but if you have all those attributes and experience and have a strong spine structure have actual power have base balance sensitivity rimi kazushi timing it is possible to do some things against more untrained fighters drunks uh, etc you know like road rage people get out of the truck like he just did you know now catching a cross into a walkie Tommy's he's a little more theoretical, but you know, I'm also a stuntman in the movies. And we have seen in the UFC this actually work 
catching crosses to ar standing arm triangles against the cage against a spinning back fist by Matt Riddle was at WrestleMania. Congratulations, dude, last night. If you see here, now we're going with more intensity and what was really more effective in the FSB train night takedown. And that takedown is also successful with when the they hands. grab your shirt and then Bio pull a gun or a knife. the head, neck, and spine. Going from a cheese out or distracting hands of Matrix. Watch my distracting hands Poirier vs. Khabib video. My used in UFC anti-cage tactics video. And there's many more Aki grappling examples and my more real new Steven Seagal vs. MMA grapplers video. Check those out. This will be against pro MMA fighters, jiu-jitsu and wrestling guys, and bigger guys, so stay tuned. Here this guy's a pro MMA fighter, pancreas fighter in Japan, and a BJJ blue belt. The loose hands allow the intercepting of the head. Allow the cross face neck crank. The loose hands allow the rotation of the spine, breaking a structure. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. Thank you. Okay. So the audio might be a second or two um, delayed or after. I apologize for that, guys. This guy, I believe he was a pro fighter by this time uh, in Japan at Brave Gym here, 2014, standing elbow crank. People say it would never work on anything good. You know, all my haters online because they're no good. This guy has done judo like 36 years, I believe, training with two-time Olympian Koga. See the elbow crank there, couldn't get the tap, but could take him down with the head tilt. Systemo biomechanics. Back to the uh, blue belt pro fighter, smaller guy, yes, but I lock his elbow by pushing out his face. That was actually an elbow lock, a straight arm bar. Here's a bigger pro uh, fighter from deep, much bigger than me, with MMA gloves on. And there's a Kodagaishi. Didn't quite get him, caught his base, lowered his head, so snap him down to the 10 finger guillotine. And managed to get on top, and shortly thereafter, I tapped him with a reverse toe hook. These are from, these another, these are uh, Pancrase fighters, pro fighters. These are guys are very good grapplers. People see this and go, oh, those guys are no good, they're white balls. No, you're wrong. Those are idiots online. Aki grappling, my my Nikyo variation there. I think it has a different name in Japanese jujitsu, maybe in Daikaru or uh, certain ninjutsu rus. Um, whether or not that is true Nikyo or not, but that's how I do it with two hands in control. Really, do I actually put it up on my shoulder and chest? So those clips here were some of the ones that first kind of blew up guys and made a short video. And then I made that second video. Make sure you check it out. The more real new Steven Seagal vs. MMA Grapplers video. Because um, that shows a lot of examples. And I'm just showing the stuff I've done in the last like year and a half that didn't get put into that video. Here's sparring a uh, pro fighter at AACC in Tokyo. We're a former pro fighter. I think he had stopped fighting at this time, but like me. I haven't fought in a long time, but still training. Russian two-on-one elbow breaker with boxing gloves on. I could have broken his elbow there, taking him down. This guy's a wrestling coach and a BJJ blue belt. I was already a BJJ black belt at this time, but he was a very good wrestler, uh, you know, wrestling coach. And we're going uh, takedowns uh, plus 10 seconds with submissions. Standing elbow crank. He had never seen that before. Asked me to teach him. Here's going with it.